Uh, this is the hour, this is a portion of the hour that we record and we add it to our YouTube channel, the Exceptional Conservative Network channel. Uh, you can go there and watch some of the greatest interviews ever. Uh, I don't like to brag and boast, but my guests are a whole lot better than I am an interviewer. Uh, and one of those particular great guests this evening happens to be Michael Vasquez. Uh, vast political commentary you can hear. Uh, and as well, we want to talk with him tonight about New York politics. Uh, whatever happened uh, to New York politics, it's, it's really ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. But before we do that, I, I, I am just honored by the fact that Michael has consented to join me at CPAC this year, which is the Conservative yeah. Political Action Committee. Uh, conference that's held annually. Uh, it used to be right in downtown Washington, D.C. before the socialists took over, and then they moved out to National Harbor, uh, and then socialists are moving there, and so it, they might need to find another spot. But, Michael, why <laughs> CPAC this year? Why are you joining us? Well, it's one of the exceptional events where we can actually talk with so many people both of a like mind, but also involved in the government, able to turn the tide that we see coming for 2020. People who are invested in the Constitution, who are invested in the freedoms that have made us the greatest nation in the world. And I say this because I've lived in other places in the world. And I can tell you, in my experience, there is nowhere like our nation. And thank God for it. And we can't throw it away on some of these silly ideas we hear from people like, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the many statements by Speaker Nancy Pelosi, even from Governor Cuomo and Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Uh, I mean, you. one of the things that we heard, uh, Senator Kamala Harris recently came up with it. Did you know that in November, she was out in New Hampshire and she was promoting the idea, and she's going to bring it back out again, that she wants to pay people for. She wants to pay people $250 a month, $6,000 a year to be poor. And she thinks that's a good way to help people. I think that's a great way to hold them down and be holding to the government. And that's not what America is about. Not at all. It, it just, it, 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 okay. It, it goes along the lines what, of what, what happens out in Stockton, California. And... They say that if it sounds good on paper, it feels good when someone's preaching that to you on Sunday. It seems reasonable. But when you're going down the street in Brooklyn and someone pulls a gun on you, uh, you're, you're not thinking, you know what? On paper, that gun's not going to hurt me. No. In reality, you have individuals who are dead set on taking your private property and invading your public space your, and taking away your private rights. And they do it every single day. And they're not necessarily street criminals as much as they are politicians. I want to get your thoughts in terms of that. Well, having been, I've had two experiences in life that actually play right into this. One, I've had a uh, a gentleman who was on some drug back in the late 90s who actually walked up to me. He was, this, uh, he was arm's distance away from me when he pulled his gun on me. And that's a very terrifying moment to have to live through. I also had, here I am in the southern tier now, and I had a gentleman on PCP break into my house on a Saturday morning at 5 a.m. Mm. And... You're waiting for the police to come. Now, in both situations, what are you supposed to do? What I'm going to do. In the three minutes that it took for them to show up, and I bless the Binghamton Police Force. They did a fantastic job, came in force. But in that three minutes, if I wasn't prepared and had a plan of action, which included defending myself, who knows what would have happened in that three minutes by the time they got here. Again, they could be marking a body. So this is why the Second Amendment is so important and people don't realize that that's the reality, that you have individuals who are either deranged or uh, on drugs or just bad people that exist out there, and you can't buy them off. It's never going to work. And that's why I don't like the red flag legislation, which gives the government the ability to criminalize a, a law-abiding 99.999% .99 
of all gun owners in the nation, 160 million people who own 350 million guns in New York State, that's 5 million people, one in four people in New York State, not a single problem. We're there to defend ourselves and protect ourselves from others and also a bad government. Yeah. This is what it's for. And they want to then have the ability that because someone said so, they want to be able to take away your gun. Now, here's something about red flags that your listeners, listeners should all know about because it's sweeping the nation. I've done about eight months of research on this. The red flag legislation says that if you have a dangerous weapon, which could be uh, you bought a steak knife, you bought a baseball bat, whatever, that they're able to then go into your home and take away your firearms. Well, guess what? Not only are they going to take away your firearms, they're going to take away your kids. In almost every single state, including New York, there's Child Protective Services. If uh, the police have to notify Child Protective Services because they're coming into your home to take away your firearms. If you're too dangerous to have a firearm in your Second Amendment rights, you're too dangerous to have your kids. The state is taking your children. That is you a know, fact. You, you hit on a great point. And it is the unintended consequences for being politically correct. There are individuals tonight who are listening to the State of the Union address, Michael, and they're saying, well, you got to give, you got to compromise. Uh, you you got to give a little something, something on both sides. Both sides uh, are not always right and they're not always wrong. It, it's just that they got two different ways of looking at it. You, you got to split the difference. But there are unintended consequences for trying to marry democracy with a republic. If you could speak to that. Well, I, I think part of it is we there are some ideas that are just bad ideas. Thank and you. they are in government and they just fail. So let's admit that because I know everyone wants to be compromising and we should be. That's what we have a government for. That's why we have a republic and not a democracy so that we can compromise on these ideas and come to a middle ground. And I believe in that. But at the same time, we're seeing, like here in New York at this moment, we have a single party government, which means that, and Gov Cuomo said it himself, in the state of the state, he's not listening to anyone. He doesn't care what we think. He's going to push his agenda. Well, his agenda, looking at the economics of it for a second, his two most successful things that he's done uh, since 2010 is he spent a total of 700 97 million dollars to create 1322 jobs that worked out to about six hundred thousand dollars per job create and to give it a good perspective the obama stimulus which was so bad democrats will not say the word stimulus anymore not since 2009 uh, actually 2010 um, it was so bad that was only a quarter million dollars per job created. And Cuomo has the wonderful benefit of being able to say that he has driven out almost two million people. He's driven out uh, tens of thousands of businesses. We just lost two billion dollars in tax revenue. And his answer is, well, I'll increase more taxes. Mike Vasquez with us tonight, really? ladies and gentlemen, from Vast Political Commentary. New York is a ticking time bomb on the debt clock and, and, and we talk about student loans we talk about the mortgage crisis we talk about the national debt that yeah we talk about all those particular things but literally nearly two million people left new york N not the new york region which would include canada and other places they left the state and the majority of them traveled down 95 to a place called Miami to call their home. And the number one reason why they did that was because they only have to pay property taxes. There is no income tax in Florida. Cuomo says good riddance to them. Your thoughts. Is this how you run a government? This is absolutely not the way to run a government. We haven't seen a successful plan that came out of Governor Cuomo's time in office. I don't know how he's, 
he made it into office because the third time because of New York City and the illusion of safety and the illusion of success. He has these wonderful selling points, but it doesn't have really time. It's somewhere else. And I say someone who lived in Moscow saw the civil war they had there and have lived to tell about it. So Mike, they're listening to you tonight and they're saying, okay, you sound reasonable. Uh, you, 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 and we give it to you. We give that to you. You sound reasonable. But you don't support <laughs> that type of thinking versus socialism that's going to help everybody. You know, I, I hear this all the time. And that's the thing. First, if we actually, if they actually believe in the freedom of speech and thought that they keep promising in every one of their little ads and speeches, mm -hmm. then they would have no problem with any person of any color or any race, religion, gender. They'd be able to say, okay, you can believe whatever you want. And if you want to be a conservative or you want to be a Republican, it's perfectly fine. I salute you and I promote you in doing that. You've never heard them say that. You won't hear them say that. No, nope. because that's not what they believe. What they believe is you, you're perfectly fine to say anything you want as long as you believe what I believe. See, and, and I've actually paid attention to them. I listen to people, you know, and I've talked to pretty much every politician, every candidate of every party in the entire central New York region. That's about eight counties, yeah. about 720 people in there. And I, I talk to people all over and I've listened to everything they say. And when you do that, it doesn't make sense. I'll give you a great idea. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who I personally find to be one of the most challenged uh, of uh, representatives that have been elected to Congress ever. Mm -hmm. And she came up with this great idea. It's green. We're going to make everything renewable and green, except she has never bothered to take the time to one, do the math or two, actually look at what she's talking about. You can't build green renewable energy without rebuilding the grid which in the United States costs $5 trillion and in New York State costs somewhere around $500 billion. And it would take about 20 years to build. If the world's going to end in 12 years, which no one believes and is not true, then you know what? We're already dead. Have a party. But if you think that we want to actually fix things, well, the answer is let's talk about something reasonable and realistic, which is probably let's build some nuclear power we can add in some solar and wind, which are unreliable and inefficient, but we can add those in too, maybe some hydroelectric as well. And let's rebuild step by step all of the electrical grid, which means all the eco fanatical people who can't who want to hug a tree rather than a human being have to give us the way to get back in to rebuild that grid. These are all the things you don't hear when they're saying, oh, we have to love nature. We have to go green. Well, you know, there's more to it than just saying, I want to go green. Yeah. There's actually what is built, what, what you have to build to do it. And they won't talk about it. See, and that's why I'm a conservative and a Republican, because I think about, and then what's going to happen? And what yeah. does it take to get this done? It's not that I'm not against the environment. I just want to make sure that whatever I'm talking about can happen because otherwise it's useless and no one gets anything. Exactly. You all woke up this morning in New York and the New York Post had on its front page MS-13 gang war on public transportation. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know. I know in D.C., you know, we have public transportation and your security is highly at risk. It's easier to give your speech at the U.S. House of Representatives than to give a speech on the uh, trains coming out of some stations in D.C. <laughs> um, but we have never awakened to an actual gang war on the subway system. Can you speak to that and why a wall or a structure might be the most important thing to build uh, down south? Well, the only structure that's actually important and worth doing is a wall, because the reality is in 74 nations around the world at this moment, a wall works. It's effective. That's why we've had them. I mean, it, it, this isn't some kind of science or you know, high deep knowledge here and not crazy engineering. It's a wall. It, it meant to slow down and prevent people from getting in. And if we don't do that, well, we've already seen what the result is. 
We've seen the result in Mexico when we saw the Guatemalans trying to come in and they overran a chain link fence because it's not sufficient. We need a real sufficient wall to prevent that wave of people just running rampant. And you got to think about it. If someone can't respect your laws and they can't respect a physical barrier, do you really want those people in your nation? If they're picking and choosing what laws they're going to abide by, then that means you're going to be in danger. And that's why we see groups who mix into this, MS-13, potentially even terrorists, are going to try and mix into this so that they can do bad things. And we see this over and over around the world. This is not a new concept. Yeah. So we, we take the original concept of, okay, why wouldn't, here's the better question. Why shouldn't we protect our border? I, that's the one thing I have yet to hear any politician say. Give me a reason why it's a bad idea to protect our borders. Why is it a bad idea to enforce our laws? Give me a reason why we shouldn't do that. And maybe I can have some conversation about that. But I have yet to hear there is no argument that works. There you go. Mike, in the final 30 seconds, you've been doing this for a while. You are very successful as a commentator. And I want to talk with you about later on coming on to the TEC TV network. Boy, you're doing a great job here because you're handsome. <laughs> you already stole my bouncer. Um, but and yeah, finally, great how can people Amongst. listen? How can people listen to you? Uh, because you're quite elegant uh, and you overmatch with wisdom. Uh, what people undermatch with in terms of Aless Alexia uh, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez mentality. Um, how can people listen to your program, get your show, and how will they be able to work with you in terms of CPAC? Uh, well, there's a couple ways. They can go, the main hub is my main site, which is M V A S S. That's 